Dakota House is back with score predictions and picks against the spread for every single game in week two of the NFL season. We'll be here every Wednesday with this video, breaking every game down like we're about to do right now. Starting with Thursday night football, a good one in the AFC East between the Bills and the Dolphins. I'm going with Miami 27 to 23 at home on prime time. It might seem a little bold, even though they are favored, but because the Bills have won 12 out of the last 14 matchups, 12 and two, seems like the Dolphins have an issue with Josh Allen and the Bills, and that could be the case in this one. So that's why it's my be a little bit of a tough one to put money on in general but at the same time it feels like whenever the Dolphins play the Bills in a big game it feels like they're depleted they're they're, they're crushed with injuries and they're they're fairly healthy in this one I know Mostert's going to be out HM was spotted at practice today so that's a good sign if both those guys were out it's a little tough to pick even even more so may have to go with the Bills but HM was a key piece for them last week I thought Miami would be a little more explosive last week and they kind of kicked that in the gear towards the end in that comeback win against the Jags so I think that kind of continues on in this one. They're fairly fairly early in the season. They're very good at home, so they have that home field advantage in prime time. So I'm leaning with the Dolphins. I'm worried about the Bills missing their star nickel corner, Taron Johnson. That could be a problem. The Dolphins kind of could expose that using Hill, Waddle, and they use A-Chan as a running back and a receiver, it feels like, or as a pass-catching weapon, at least out of the backfield. Um, you know, wonder about Miami's offensive line. Still, they did all right last week for the most part. Uh, Greg Russo played very well for the Bills last week, so could that be a problem with them? But I'm feeling Miami making those extra plays. Again, we talked about Johnson being out for the Bills. Matt Milano obviously was missing going into the year. I, I think that's going to be a factor for them. I, I, I think their offense does plenty. You know, another thing is who you know, solidifies himself as a consistent receiver for them without digs. They, I love that they spread the ball out a bit, but they're going to need someone to step up in a game like this. I do think Kincaid's role in production grows the year as the year goes on, but that could be a factor in this game as well. I'm going with Miami. Tough one to bet on, though. Saints at Cowboys. Could be a good one. These two teams were standout teams for sure in Week 1. I'm not really going to fully buy into the Week 1 hype on the Saints, though. I love the way the Cowboys match up in this one. It is a totally different matchup for the Saints than not just because of skill level. Panthers to Cowboys, that is a big factor, but... The Saints' worry going into the season was their offensive line, and they played great last week you know, against the Panthers, but that's the Panthers' weak spot. They don't have good pass rushers. One of them's on the IR. Derek Brown goes down. He's an interior player, obviously. Cowboys are much different. They have a really good defensive line led by Micah Parsons to Marcus Lawrence. They blitz very well. Eric Kendricks overshones a blitzer as well. Uh, Zimmer drawing up what he's known for, those simulated pressures. It's a totally, totally different matchup for the Saints, and specifically their offensive line, and even for their good defense. I do love their defense, so I like the Cowboys. I'm not going to fall for that. This this is kind of a trap game, maybe, Look, if you're based too much off of week one, um, you know, if you're betting on it, but I think CeeDee Lamb's going to do some damage against this heavy man-covered Saints defense. Lattimore was a little beat up last week. And Saints defense could do some damage here and there, but Cowboys pass rush is going to get after Derek Carr. They're going to expose their offense line a little bit in this one. Um, so, again, just not just because of skill, just a totally different matchup than last week. And then you factor in the skill difference between the Panthers and the Cowboys, and that plays a big part. So I actually do like the Cowboys minus 6.5 really you know they usually take care of business at home they're a very good regular season home team and again the matchup I explained it and I like them as a lock straight up to win and there's a couple other games you see down here uh that you could pair those with you know because the money line isn't the greatest odds but I again gotta see more from the Saints here to fully buy in I like the Cowboys this week in week two Buccaneers at Lions. The Lions, one of the heavyweights of the NFC, and the Bucks looked like one of the heavyweights of the NFL last week. They were outstanding. Baker looked like the best quarterback in football last week. Uh, the, the weapons are really showing out. The offensive line's showing out. Could they match the Lions' offensive line? They got the problem for the Bucks here is the, the positive is they're good. Baker's balling. Could he be getting better? They have weapons. They stop the run pretty well, typically, led by Vita Vea. And the Lions are mainly, that's where they make their money, right? Running the, running the ball. That's all great. Problem is they have multiple injuries in the secondary. Multiple, including their star, one of the very best in football, Antoine Winfield Jr. And the Lions, they're going to... They're going to be able to throw the ball in this game. I think St. Brown is a big game. I think their weapons in general. I still think they'll be able to run the ball, but just not as well as they maybe typically do. I still think it'll be pretty solid. The Bucks struggled to score on the Lions last year. I think they'll be a little different. I like how the offense looks so far this year. So for those reasons, seven felt like a little too much. 
But I, I'd be scared to put money on it just because the, the Buccaneers are so beat up on defense, and you know the Lions at home could expose that for sure, and the Bucs. You know, didn't score much on them last year. I thought golf actually, I thought played his best game of the season. Maybe not statistically, but based on what I watched last year against the Bucks too. You know, factor that in. So there is a scenario because the injuries in Detroit that the Lions beat up on him. You know, could it be an ass beating? I'm not really counting on that, but I could see it. That's why I'd be a little scared. But to me, seven just seems like a lot for a good, you know, for a good team in the Buccaneers. So I went 28-23. Maybe some fourth down conversions for the Lions. You tip, we typically could expect those. But that, yeah, that could be an interesting one. It's a shame that the Bucks got so beat up because that would be a really good game that can go either way if not because the Bucks match up pretty well, you know, other than missing some guys. But going Lions 28-23. Colts at Packers going with Indy 20-16. Little tricky. I, there's, there's a tricky part for the Colts. You know, they could you could say, and they kind of do catch a break, but you could say they catch a break, no Jordan Love in there. But the tricky part is... Malik Willis is a totally different game plan. You know, they're not going to run the same exact plays, you know, offense going from Love to Malik Willis. You know, less throws down, less throws in general, less passes, less passes down the field for sure. Even though Willis has a strong arm, he's not very accurate, holds on to the ball a little long, but maybe more designed runs. So maybe it makes it a little bit more of a tougher game plan. It's not really on tape for the Colts. So this could be a, a trap game for sure. The Colts actually sh really struggled. They're typically a good stop and run. They really struggled last week. They are more worried about the pass, though. So I, I don't want to pay too much uh, attention to that because they were so worried about Stroud and all those weapons in the passing game that Mixon ran wild. But I do think because you wonder about the run defense, I do think Willis, Jacobs, uh, these backs will run fairly well. But I think the Colts will stack the – they'll be able to stack the box – you know, in general, uh, unlike they could do against the Texans. So that could help a little bit. They're going to make the Packers. Malik Willis try to beat them with the pass. I, I just don't see it. I think Willis will make mistakes. It actually could could stay close. I was back and forth between 23-16 or 20-16, but a lot of running clock. And I, even though the Packers defense didn't look that great last week, I do think it could be solid. I think they're they're heading in the right direction with their coaching change and the talent they have. They could turn over Anthony Richardson, but Steichen will take a look at that Eagles game, the team he used to coach, and uh, he'll he'll run Jonathan Taylor. I think Taylor has a good game. He'll run Anthony Richardson. He'll scramble. I think he'll have a good game on the ground, and he'll have some flashes through the air, but some mistakes through the air as well. So 20-16, to 16, it's not one I would put money on because LaFleur is such a good game planner and play caller that the Packers could start with the ball, and they could run all the way down the field and drain so much clock. That's one of those teams that is – really good at doing that and I don't know if quarterback really matters all that I mean a little bit for that but um, to start the game and that can really throw off the Colts and if Richardson makes you know an extra mistake you know it could stay close so it's a little scary the Colts have an advantage with no love though I'm gonna go 20 to 16 Indy uh, it is at Lambeau though a tough place to play we'll go with the Colts Jets and Titans the Jets did not look good in week one on Monday night they did play the Niners the Titans look great for a half and they absolutely choked the Titans defense is sneaky good. I think it's the real deal. I think it's legit. I love that interior defensive line. That interior defensive line could be the reason they win this game. Rodgers looks a little slower, taking shorter steps. He doesn't he doesn't look right, really. I mean, he can still play. He can still throw the ball. He's still smart. But in terms of his footwork, something looks a little off. So the Titans interior, you know, just collapsing that pocket could, could be the difference in, in this one. I'm just not, you know, against the Jets defense, I'm not going to trust Will Levis here. The Titans special teams even can be a little bit of a mess. So I'll take the Jets. Titans are really good stopping runs. So I don't know if Brees Hall goes crazy. I think he'll catch the ball well. I think Wilson makes some plays. But, again, it's a really good defense. But two really good defenses. Jets offense. Rodgers makes that extra smart play, that one extra play. I'm going to take them 23-17. to But in Tennessee, in that defense, in that Interior D line throwing off Rodgers makes it a little scary. Where maybe you don't want to put money on it. That three and a half makes it a little scary as well. Uh, maybe you wish it was three or a little less. But twenty three seventeen Jets is what I got in this one. 49ers at Vikings. Both these teams looked really good last week. You know the problem is one of them played the Jets and one of them played the Giants. But the Vikings could be a little sneaky. It's a Sam Darnold revenge game. Maybe he's got knows a thing or two about the Niners. Maybe they know a thing or two about him. Uh, but the Vikings look really good on both sides of the ball, so we can't really sleep on them. I'm going to be much more confident to pick the Niners. No hesitation here pick the Niners, but I do think six is a bit. 
You look at the game last year, I don't want to base too much off that, but Purdy probably played his worst game of the year. He had struggles with Brian Flores' defense, and it looked sure looked like a really good Brian Flores defense in Week 1. Tough for competition this week. I don't think McCaffrey would play. Mason looked unreal last week. I don't think he goes that crazy. Uh, I think the Niners kind of keep it, the clock rolling, keep it underneath. Let's try not to let the Vikings at the playmaking defense, it feels like. Let's, let's not let them get the hand, their hands on the ball a little bit. So I do think it stays close. I Darnold, the passing game, Aaron Jones, the offensive line, looked good last week for the Vikings. It's a much different matchup against the Niners defense. I think you know Darnold could make a mistake or two. I don't think Aaron Jones goes crazy like he did last week and wasn't too crazy. Um, so I, I think a lot less scoring than people are expecting this one. I like the under, 46.5. I think it, I think yeah, as you can tell with my score, I, I think it goes under. And the Vikings, again, both teams were better than expected on offense last week, so I think that's where it gets a little scary, and I think that's why it's at 46.5. I think they're basing too much off last week, you know, where the Niners were much better than expected on the run, uh, on the ground, and the Vikings, you know, scored much more points than expected, but they played the Giants, so and they got a pick six in there as well, don't forget, uh, and there was another pick as well. So um, six seems like a bit. Vikings probably play them close because that Brian Flores defense but uh, it should it Niners should win this game, and even though it's in Minnesota, tough place to play, and it should stay under that 46 and a half. Seahawks at Patriots. I got Seattle 19 to 13. A little bit of a defensive game. This could be a little sneaky if you're basing too much off Week One. Then maybe a little higher on the Patriots, and uh, you know Seattle's got to go to New England, far travel. Uh, you know, the Patriots looked good last week, so they could pull this off at home. The defense alone could win games, and they could do that right here. Seattle was a little sloppy in the beginning of the Broncos game, you know, turning the ball over, getting safeties. If that happens in a game like this, which it could against the Patriots defense, then uh, the Patriots could you know, probably win this game. But Seahawks got, you know, they smooth, you know, they got smoother, you know, throughout that game. I think that kind of carries over in this one, not a whole lot of offense. But I look at the, what the Patriots won with in week one. They they won with defense, Ramondre Stevenson running well, and Brissett taking care of the football. Seahawks will be much better stopping run than the Bengals. The Bengals actually might be one of the worst teams stopping run this year. We kind of thought that going into the year. Mike McDonald's defense looks very solid, well-coached defense. You know, it'll, he'll have a game plan for the Patriots offense. I don't think Stevenson goes wild on the ground. I uh, think they'll turn over Brissett. And if you notice, the Bengals probably should have ran the ball more on the Patriots because they are running fairly efficiently. They just didn't do it enough. So I think with uh, Kenneth Walker and Charbonnet, the Seahawks should be able to run fairly well. Just got to take care of the football on this one. So I do think they match up well, even though they're away. So I'll go 19-13, but the Patriots, it's not one I would bet on because the Patriots realistically could win that game. So maybe you like the Patriots plus three because you're getting the points as well. I originally thought about that, but I sit down. I'm like, ah, I'm not falling for the week one stuff. They're not gonna be able to run the ball like they did. You know, Mike McDonald coaches a really good defense. Young guys that can that can cover the underneath stuff here in Seattle. Um, you know, and, and they should be able to run the ball actually. You know, with no Barmore in there for the Patriots. So this is the score I came up with: nineteen thirteen Seattle. But wouldn't put money on it. Giants at Commanders, an NFC East battle. My gut's telling me the Giants in this one. They were they were the second worst team in football last week after the Panthers. They were awful last week, and the Commanders. It didn't go great, but they they were able to score some points. Daniels was able to use his legs, but definitely needed. And they played a much better team in the Buccaneers, and they'll play this week. So I, most people probably would take the Commanders for that reason. I'm feeling the Giants this one. I'm not gonna you know I'm not gonna get com go completely cold in the Giants from just week one. I, I, the defensive front of the Giants, I think, wins this one. I think there'll be some more action. But Dexter Lawrence, Brian Burns, I think you know people ripping Thibodeau. I think he picks it up a little bit. I'm not. I don't love the Commanders' offensive line, even though it played okay last week. I think the Giants' defensive line will expose it. They'll slow the run. They'll get after Daniels. Daniels will scramble on them, and that could be that could beat the Giants. But they're going to run a lot of zone coverage, and they're going to make they try try to get Daniels to beat them through the air and he'll make some plays here and there but I just don't think enough I also think neighbors has a big game here the Giants will kind of roll with him getting him the ball over the field and Daniel Jones picks it up a little bit takes care of the football a little bit more I just don't love the the, the commander's lack of edge uh, you know they have a good interior line don't love the corners and I don't love the edge love the interior love the linebackers but just not having you know, the, you know, that unique guy, you know, that can come off the edge or even blitz. Uh, you know, I think LeVu has potential in that category, but just not showing that to me, you know, that 
so he they won't ruin Daniel Jones' life like the Vikings did. So that's my thinking. But mainly, the Giants' def- defensive line wins it for him. 20-17. I do like the Giants' money line. You're getting points. I like that as well. So that kind of is a given. I like both those. But I would just take the, you know take a shot. You know take a flyer on the Giants' money line, uh, or if you want to take the points. And I do like the under 44 and a half. I, you know, I, I don't you know with the Giants defensive line. It, it, I think they slow the commanders down and the, I, I just the Giants aren't going to score a ton of points, even if you have them winning. So 44 and a half. I see that going under and I did like uh, the commanders bucks going over. I was writing that last week, but this week I think it goes under. Give me the upset in the New York football Giants. Chargers Panthers could be a little tricky when it comes to the spread. Six and a half is a lot going into week two. A lot of teams covered last week, and you know everyone. Everyone's going to base everything off week one. The Panthers, you almost have to because it was so bad. But do the Chargers score enough to win by more than six and a half? And um, you know they 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 handled business last week. So and it's in Carolina, so it is a little scary. But man, the matchup says Chargers. The Panthers are also just awful, and they don't have edge rushers. You know, Wanham's on IR. They've been scrambling for corners. Even their start, who's supposed to be their star corner, Horn, did not play well last week. And now their best player, Derek Brown, goes down for the year. And you factor in that the offense is awful. And then you factor in that the Chargers' pass rush looked really good last week, and they do have really good players on paper, um, you know, as well. So it makes sense. So they're going to get after Bryce Young. They got playmakers in the secondary. You factor that in, and then you factor in the Panthers couldn't stop the run last week. The Chargers ran the ball very well, and they'll do that with Dobbins and uh, Gus Edwards. And the Panthers' focus is going to be so much off on that because they couldn't stop the run last week, and the Chargers ran well. The tape says the Chargers are a run team, so that can actually open things up for Herbert to be able to throw the football as well. So the matchup says the Chargers should should be fine here. 24-16 is what I, what I got. Uh, it's a hardball-type game. Like, hardball, knowing his coaching style, They'll find the weakness of the opponent, and, and they just I don't really see the Chargers Harbaugh getting upset like big. This would be a big upset. I don't, you know, he'll find ways to to control the game and win these ones. So I'm gonna go with the Chargers here. Uh, I wouldn't bet on that. I don't see anything I love because six and a half is a bit matchup says and how bad the Panthers are. That all says they should cover. It's just a bit, you know. I just wouldn't. I wouldn't touch that one there. But I got the Chargers winning in Carolina. If the Panthers win this one, everyone's gonna go. Okay, maybe we base a little bit too much off Week One. Uh, I don't know if anybody would be buying into them, but it'll be interesting. Browns at Jags. I like the Jags, and that one is growing on me more and more. Uh, both should be solid teams. The Browns should be much better than you know this year than what they showed in Week One against the Cowboys. But in Jacksonville, my only worry about the Jags is. And the Browns got a really good defense, really good pass rush, really good, really good secondary. And the Jags are missing Tyson Campbell, their star corner. But man, the Browns got some injuries. And Joku's not playing now. And then you have the two tackles. We have to monitor those injuries. They, de- you know, desperately missed those guys last week. Deshaun Watson's not playing well. Maybe he plays a little bit better in this game, and he's dealing with the whole off the field issue again. So it's just a distraction. For everybody, they're gotta, they got to go to Jacksonville. And the Jags actually played well. They actually outplayed the Dolphins last week. They did. They they choked a little bit. ETN on that fumble, and I didn't love the way Doug Peterson called the second half, but they looked explosive in the first half. They really should have won that game. ETN doesn't fumble. They probably beat the Dolphins in, in a big way. Um, so I think they make plays in this one, enough plays. I love the defense. Ryan Nielsen, really good defensive coach. The defensive line looks really good. They'll get pass rush like the Cowboys did. Maybe not as much, but they'll get uh, pressure sure pass rush against Deshaun Watson but what I what really stands out the Browns Stefanski offense you know what they got they got to get the run game going to open up everything else the, the the run game got taken away from being down by so much so early last week and what I love here for the Jags is, is that they stop they shut down the run of the Dolphins it real typically is a really good run defense so um, that is another reason I like the Jags so it's all the distraction with Watson I like the Jags minus three in this one Three and a half would be a little scary. I've seen it bounce around different apps. I see three and three and a half. I like three. I don't love three and a half, but my confidence is growing more and more with the Jacksonville Jaguars in this one. Hopefully they don't get down on themselves after blowing that game because they outplayed the Dolphins. They should have won that game, but they got got to take care of business in this one. Raiders and Ravens, a big line. Usually you stay away from these types early in the year, but there's a lot of ass beatings last week or big wins. This is going to be one of those patent Ravens, you know, classic, I mean, how many did they have last year? They just beat even good teams they did. They just beat the brakes off them. Uh, I think it's going to be one of those games, uh, maybe even more than this with the score that I have. I think they match up very, very well. 
the only issue for the Ravens here is the offensive line seems to be worse than last year. We kind of figured that looking at what they did do it. Uh, and Max Crosby is maybe the very, the best defense defender in football. So that could be an issue. But, man, the Raiders couldn't stop Dobbins last week on the ground. So coming into this one, it's like, all right, we didn't stop the run on the interior too well last week. Uh, Derrick Henry, we got to go to Baltimore and play Derrick Henry. But then Lamar is top five in rushing. You know, How do they deal with that? It, and I think Lamar throws the ball a little bit better. He like, barely missed throws. But now he's home, more comfortable against the Raiders. You know, he's got to deal with Max Crosby and Christian Wilkins. But they'll have explosive plays. It just seems like it feels like it's gearing up to be one of those Ravens big wins. I think they had more beatdowns last year than anyone. Um, Raiders turned the ball over last week, and maybe they don't, but still, I don't I don't trust them to do enough against this Ravens defense with the guys that they have, uh, and the Ravens kind of came alive towards the end of that Chiefs game as well. So I'll take Baltimore. Nine's a lot. It's scary, but I got them covering that nine. Again, I got that gut feeling it's going to be a pretty big win from them, and then uh, they should be a lock straight up at home. Uh, don't see them losing this game. It'd be a bit of a surprise. So pairing that, you see down here with some of the other, we talked about the Cowboys, some of the other money line, you know, straight up uh, could could be a pretty good option. But this would be, uh, there is, there's always upsets in weeks one, two, I mean, throughout the year, but a lot in one, two, three, maybe sometimes week four. This would be a surprising one, but you can't fully rule it out. Rams and Cardinals, definitely one that can go either way. Uh, you know, either way on the score as well. Like I could actually see it being, Lower than this, but I went with 27-24. I can see that because the Cardinals run the ball a lot with their quarterback, Kyler Murray, and their running backs and the Rams. To beat the Cardinals, you run the ball, uh, and then Stafford doesn't have a ton of pass protection, so Kyron Williams could have a big game as well. Uh, you know, So I could see a lot of running clock, but I think we'll have explosive plays from these offenses. The Rams are just too beat up right now, and then you know, very much so on the offensive line. Multiple guys going down, multiple guys going to the IR. They're already missing uh, corner Darius Williams. Now they're missing Puka Nakua. Is well, just too many for me to pick them away in an NFC West battle, but they could still win it because they actually played the Lions very, very well and had a chance if they got the ball in overtime to win that game. So they could do it, but I was actually impressed with the Cardinals offense last week. I think Marvin Harrison gets his head out of his ass in the second game here. Uh, you know, not not fully trusting the Rams defense. I think they'll do enough and they'll get pressure to find ways to get pressure on Stafford. Uh, wouldn't one I would bet on though, because I do think at the end of the day, the Rams are probably the better team, but you're away in week two. You're missing a lot of you know, a lot of guys, but I go Cardinals 27, 24 wouldn't touch anything when it comes to that game. Really, really Steelers and Broncos should be a lot of defense. It is in Denver. They have that altitude, a home field advantage. So the Broncos could pull it off because it's one of those defensive games that could go either way. It could come down to a field goal or one turnover. So really could go either way. So I wouldn't bet on it, but I wouldn't, but uh, I like the Steelers, the way they match up the defense played, bo both defenses played fairly well last week. And the, not so much in the second half of the Broncos. The Steelers defense was out of their mind. The Broncos had the worst uh, pass block win rate. They allowed the most pressure last week. They're going against TJ Watt, that could be a problem against a rookie quarterback in Bo Nix. They're going to play small ball, and maybe that you know, it'll get some teams. Maybe it gets gets the Steelers. I just don't think they do enough offensively against what looked like an elite defense last week. And then for the Steelers, yeah, I mean they don't they didn't score touchdowns. You know, I don't love Justin Fields, especially in the passing game. Um, you know, so that'd be a reason for the Broncos, but I look at this matchup and the Steelers do match up. Well, the Broncos can't stop the run. Najee Harris ran fairly well last week. Justin Fields ran pretty well last week. So you do have to, the Broncos, like, how do we game plan for that? We already can't stop the run. So the matchup says Steelers on both sides with the Broncos, with their defense and playmaking ability at home, they, they, it could happen, but feeling Pittsburgh in this one, low, low scoring game, 17 13 the under over under is already really low so that kind of scares me a little bit there is a scenario where the Steelers just run wild and they score like Fields and Najee Warren these guys break loose so that over under was set a little too low but I thought about it Bengals and Chiefs and it could be a little bit of a trap game because the Bengals you just get super cold on them last week but I don't know I got the Chiefs 26-16 uh, they're only favored by five I think they cover that but it, it could be a little scary because the Bengals do play pretty good defense still except for the run defense is their issue uh, they usually play well against the Chiefs though in general but run defense is the issue why you could side with either team because of that with the Chiefs you just run the ball to Pacheco he's gonna get he's gonna get yards he's gonna get yards after contact they're gonna control the clock they're gonna win the game but to go with the Bengals like the Chiefs aren't a team that just pounds the football they throw the ball a ton 
Um, so that could work in the Bengals' favor, and that's why it's a little scary. I thought about yeah putting yeah bet the the Chiefs. I thought about it, still thinking about it, but it could stay close. For those reasons, the Bengals typically play good pass defense, and maybe they they are a good team. They usually play the Chiefs pretty well. Maybe they figure it out, but. Man, the Chiefs should have success on offense in general. You have to worry about Mahomes in the pass game, and they should be able to run by default because the Bengals' run defense is is not great. And then T. Higgins still dealing with a little bit of an injury, wasn't spotted at practice today, but could he play? Certainly could. It's not trusting the Bengals' offense. They don't run the ball enough, and the Chiefs are very solid on both sides of the ball, and they take care of business. I have 26-16, to 16, got them winning by 10. So that could be a bet right there. Well, Interesting one for sure. Sunday night football, Bears at Texans. I like the Texans this one in, in this one, 24-16. Uh, I'm not actually going to bet. Even though I do like it, I don't love betting the, the Texans minus six because the Bears defense is so good where they can keep it closer than this. I can see that scenario because they have a very good defense and apparently special teams as well looking at last week. So could they get a kick return and it just stays closer than that six? I'm, I'm pretty damn confident with the Texans winning this game though. So you see, yeah, bet the under 45 and a half. I just don't trust. I love the Bears defense so the Texans don't go crazy here, uh, but they do enough. And But I don't love where the Bears offense is at looking at last week. But I do think the Titans defense is better than people think. So the Bears kind of click into gear a little bit this week, but I just don't see there being enough scoring in this one. Maybe that one's the unders are scarier than the other ones because the Texans could pop off because they're that explosive on offense. The Bears usually are good stopping to run. They weren't great stopping to run. They weren't awful at all, but they weren't great stopping to run last week. Then Mixon ran wild, but their main focus has to be Shroud and all these damn weapons. I know Jalen Johnson will do his thing, but do, do other guys you know who aren't being guarded by him, do they get open? Um, you know, so the Texans could get going on offense. I, the Bears defense or offense, excuse me, did not really earn much last week, and now they're playing a D'Amico Ryan's uh, defense. I think he'll game plan pretty well. The difference is that the main issue for the Bears offense was the Titans' interior, which they might have the best interior in football. They, they they're up there. Texans don't quite have that interior. They have everything else. They don't have that interior. So could that work in the Bears' favor? I still think they're a little bit of a work in progress, especially looking at last week on offense. So I don't know if they'll score a much here. Uh, if I don't know if they'll score a whole lot here. So 24-16, Texans is what I got. It should stay under. A little more confident than the other ones, though, the more I'm talking. And then I do have the Texans winning straight up, and you can pair that in a parlay with the Cowboys and the Ravens. So there's your Sunday night matchup. Uh, could be an interesting one there. Monday night football, I have the Falcons scoring 20 and the Eagles scoring 30. It's not one I would put money on. It's a little bit sketchy of one, but you see all my uh, spread picks for the week down there. Um, six and a half seems like a lot. I can argue both sides, but I'm going to go with the Eagles. The Falcons are still figuring things out. Kirk Cousins post Achilles injury and... and they he couldn't make adjustments with that offensive line. Like the Steelers were throwing some rain. Maybe he didn't see coming, but typically he does. But he they couldn't get on the same page last week, and I think that's going to take a little bit of time. The positive here is they are, and they will figure it out. But the positive, the other positive here is they're not going against T.J. Watt, and the Eagles don't even have a son Reddick anymore. So how good are they off the edge? They're they're good enough, but they're not close to you know T.J. Watt level out there. So that could be good. Uh, and maybe, you know, again, they're going to figure it out at some point, the Falcons. I think they'll have a really good offense. Uh, so maybe they, maybe it's this week. I think it's a little early. They're a little sloppy. They're going to go to Philly, uh, you know, on Monday night football. Tough for Kirk Cousins and the boys there. And, yeah, the, the the tough part to predict, the Falcons defense actually played very well. The offense let them down last week. They played the Steelers, you know, Justin Fields and the lack of weapons besides George Pick George Pickens and Najee Ayers there. The Eagles, a lot different. Got to worry. I think the film is going to be, breakdown is going to be, all right, Barkley was the whole offense last week. I shouldn't say the whole offense because A.J. Brown, these guys played very well. Devontae Smith had some really clutch catches in that game as well. So, but I think the main focus has to be Barkley, even through the air, Barkley. And then you got Hurts running game to deal with. You got A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, Dallas Goddard. Uh, you know, very good offensive line. So, in Philly, Monday night, I'm going to go with the Eagles scoring it up 30 points, which maybe is a little bold. I don't know if it's that bold, but just because the Falcons defense should, should be really good and look good last week. But I'm going to go 30 to 20. I got them covering, but that's a lot of points, you know, for the Falcons team that could be really good if they figure it out. It's just kind of up in the air when they, they will figure it out. It's a little early. Uh, but there you have it. All my spread picks throughout the video. I showed my favorite bets as well. Added that this week. It's something I really like. Felt good about that. Um, Going to be more and more accurate as the year goes on. That's typically how it goes. Everyone's a little less accurate early in the year. But feel really good about this week. Obviously confident 
uh, moving forward. Check out our straight up picks with the other guys uh, on the channel. That video went up last night. I have a bunch of videos covering each week, even recapping the week. So make sure you like, subscribe, and turn notifications on. Very, very important. Would really be appreciated as well. That's going to do it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.